Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Monday, November 5th. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. And over there, we have Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Hey, and one of everyone's favorites is here. <gasps> yes. Laura Osnes is here to talk about all kinds of stuff. She's got a lot going on. She's been concertizing a lot. <laughs> and Bandstand, our, one of our favorite musicals, lives on. It forever. does. Still talking about Bandstand. We love talking about Bandstand. We love talking about Bandstand. But first, our top five. And this new show has a new name, but the same character. So this doesn't happen all the time. What doesn't well, happen? Well, we got a press release today announcing who the new old Josie is in Waitress, and I went, who's, who's old Josie? <laughs> exactly. I know about old Joe. Dun, dun, dun. Gender change. Yeah. Gender swap. Gender swap. Uh, June Squibb, who was Oscar nominated for that indie movie Nebraska, that was like a big, a big moment for her, is replacing Al Roker. I bet she never thought she would replace... <laughs> The Today Show weatherman in a in Broadway musical. show. No, but that she doesn't is. come up that often. Um, <laughs> Al Roker's leaving November 18th, and then uh, Joe will get a gender swap, and um, old Josie will walk out a couple days later. New I costume. This. I assume it'll be a little bit. I was adjusted. trying to figure out what this means for like the show and for like Take it for Robinson, an old who, man. by the way, has extended for the second time. Yay. She will now go through December 9th. Laura Ossis is applauding for that news, as are we. <laughs> Fun fact about oh. June Squibb. Yeah, I want to hear it. Well, she is a Broadway vet. Do you know what she made her Broadway debut doing? No. She played... I'm not even going to try. You guys, sit down for this. I'm sitting. She played Electra in the original Gypsy opposite <gasps> Ethel Merman. Wow. She was a replacement Electra on Broadway, the original run. That's crazy. Well, so she came from Broadway. Uh, she also was in Gory Stories, The Happy Time, and a bunch of off-Broadway things, and a play called Sacrilege in the 90s. Anyway, she's back. We're very happy to have her, mm -hmm. and uh, Waitress is all the better for it. Congratulations. And, sh and uh, oh, yeah, no, no, Nicolette's now there through the ninth. I already said that. Said yeah, you that. did say it. And then yeah. who's going to be there for Christmas? I don't know, but got to have a gimmick. What's the gender going to be? I don't know. It could be anybody. And this off-Broadway play is popping away. Oh, we're a little sad about this. Mm -hmm. uh, that rhymed, though. Thank you. She's, play, she's very away. talented. Nice. We like a rhyme. We just talked we about We love this. a Thank rhyme. Thank you so much. Uh, Popcorn Falls is going to conclude its run on November 25th. Of course, if you remember to they that Live at Five greatness. when A lot of guests. We had a, Too we, many guests. We squished in, and uh, Tom Serrata and Adam Heller were here, and Christian Borle, who is making his directorial debut with this show. Uh, they were all here talking about it. sounds like a very charming show, so go and see it. You have until November 25th. It's at the Davenport. It's Broadway. at the Davenport off Broadway. Thank you, Paul. And these guys are having some magic to do. So this is kind of funny. <laughs> this is so <laughs> actors. Sometimes when musicals are being developed, actors get cast. I mean, not sometimes, all the time. They do readings and workshops and labs. I love when it's lab, like they're getting the, the chemistry. <laughs> they put on their white coats and they make magic. They figure out the chemistry. So. Um, and these actors aren't supposed to tell people really that they're doing these things necessarily. It's a Sometimes secret. Sometimes they have to sign documents. It's a secret process. It's, especially nowadays, right? I remember when Spider-Man was happening, like everyone had to like sign their life away. Well, anyway. Yeah. Um, so a photo appeared on social media in the last Oof. 24 hours of a very fantastic group of people. We had Derek Klenna, Cheyenne Jackson, Matt Doyle, John Bielman. Dillon, Dillon, right? Mm -hmm. Burnside, yep. I said his name right. Heath Calvert, Nick Rashad Burroughs, and Anna Viafanye. And we were like, what a cool group of people that's just fun, taking a fun photo together. <laughs> and then Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. Speaking of Spider Man. Said, hey, we had a good time doing the Magic Mike workshop. So they all did a reading of Magic oh. Mike. So that doesn't mean they're going to do it on Broadway no. or anything, but it means that the Magic Mike musical is moving forward. Were you and trying Roberto's to cast it before book. that? Were you like, who, what are they, what, what could this fit group of fit people oh, be? Oh, I knew, but oh, okay. you know, but <laughs> we're not, you know, it's, it's all secrets. Uh, and this is a show that's been sort of going on for a few years. They've been doing readings of it, um, different actors have done it. Uh, Derek Klenna w uh, playing Mike. So. Oh. And I think Zion Jackson's playing the... Um, I don't know anything about this movie. I'm sure know, you know Beth, a lot. I know, but I'm going to explain it to you Please because do. they know. Yeah, we exactly. all I'm knows. a little in the dark. Laura also uh, is a and, big Magic uh, Mike Shia fan. Zion Jackson <laughs> playing the Matthew McConaughey role, I think, which is fun. And mm -hmm. if rumor has it, John Bielman might be playing Big D Richie. Fill in the blank. I, Good to know. I, my eyes are open, and I'm very interested. The original Big D Richie was on Show People. Really? Yeah, Joe Maganello. Okay. Look it up. Yeah. 
I'm gonna look that up. And this uh, fan favorite is taking Billy across the pond. Here's some exciting casting news. Mm. Todrick Hall is gonna play Billy, fin Billy Flynn in Chicago in the West End, which he already did it cool. here, of course. He starts um, on November 19th, and he will do a limited engagement. I can't talk today. Limited engagement through January 5th. I'm excited Laura Osnes is here. He's replacing Duncan James, who will play his last performance on November 17th. She giggles You're at so everything. You're so excited you can't speak? I don't know. I'm just tired. It's just uh, Laura. Yeah, it's just Laura. Like the nicest the person in town. Nice, That's true. Nice person on Broadway. Uh, of course, Todrick Hall has been on the stage before. He was in Broadway's Kinky Boots, The Color Purple, and Memphis. And of course, he is a YouTube sensation. It's true. And we have even more West End casting. Remember that play you really liked, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Dash Time? <laughs> I do remember that play that I liked. Remember that one? <laughs> it, uh, it's returning to the West End. And Joshua you don't say Jenkins, the dash, though. Okay. Who I don't know, but I'm sure he's fantastic, uh, is doing it. He did it on the tour, a UK and an international tour. And also Julie Hale will be in there, and Stuart Lang, and Emma Beadle. I don't know these people, but You I'm sound sure excited, though. They're fantastic <laughs> West End actors. Preview start at the Piccadilly. I like that theater name, yeah. on November 29th, and it'll play through next April. Great. Now, before I go, oh, okay. I know you're like, good, Laura can finally come on. Finally. Uh, we did a shot, we did a culture list. I want to talk about the results. Oh, of, okay. Right, about yeah. Sean, Chandra, what do they call it? Shonda, Shonda Rhimes. Right, but they call it Shonda, Shonda Land. Land Shonda Land, her like production right. company. And we asked which Shonda Land person do we want to come back to Broadway, or come to Broadway. Right. Most of the people on that list have been on Broadway right. before. N top three, number three, Audrey McDonald. What show was she on? She was on private practice. Oh, good, good nice. job. I Number did. two, Sandra O. Oh, Grey's on, Anatomy. But what what off Broadway play was she in that we both loved Stop in the kiss. '90s? Stop Kiss, <laughs> the best. And number one, Diana Sun wrote which that, which is kind of obvious. Uh, yeah. And also, there's an interview with Emily Bautista up on the site, mm -hmm. and we have some amazing photos from last night. American Sun opened. Hey, the guy Happy named opening. Jordan is in that. We're getting this from Laura. We're gonna bring Laura on because. <laughs> I'm just saying what she's doing off camera. <laughs> we want to um, watch you do Laura oh, Steve too, yeah. She did a show with him. And uh, <laughs> yeah. also a and brand Stephen new Puzzle. thing that Beth and I are doing called Front Row. That's right. It's a new show. <gasps> it's a new show. So, Check it out. Uh, Teasers. New show, Front Row. Another <gasps> rhyme. On that note, Paul, it's been nice seeing you. <laughs> Laura Osnes is here. <laughs> Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest? Yes, of course. Guys, say we have Laura Osnes in the studio with us today. She's here to talk about Bandstand coming back to movie theaters. Uh, she most recently appeared on Broadway in Bandstand, and she earned Tony nominations for her leading roles in Cinderella and Bonnie and Clyde. Her other stage credits include Grease, South Pacific, and Anything Goes. She also has been involved in the Princess Party a lot. We might be able to hear a little bit more about that later on today. Be sure to follow her on social media at Laura Osnes, and please leave all of your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Laura and Beth. Hi, Laura. Hi, Beth. I Hi, do get excited when you come because it's just like, you know, rainbows and sunshine. I'm I mean, not exaggerating. Last time you were so here, hard. it was raining. You came. It stopped raining. Oh, I forgot it's about true. that. It's a true fact. Is that true? It's true. Let's see if it stops raining today because it's raining again. There you go. And once again, you're here <laughs> in November, our birthday month. Yes. So happy almost birthday. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> Bandstand's almost back. It is. The boys are back. Oh, I love it. That's our little tagline. Boys are back. Are you going to go proud? see it? I, to be honest, I probably not. We saw a screening. <laughs> I think you saw it. Yeah, we saw a screening of it with the cast before it aired um, before. And so in Ju June, July, June. Um, and so I'm thrilled that it's coming back to yes. theaters. I happen to also have a concert out of town the night of the 15th, the first night it's airing. And the 19th. The second day it's airing just so happens to be my birthday. And really? As fun as it would this. be to like go see Bandstand on my birthday, I probably won't do that. It feels like a lot of watching yourself. It's, yeah. It's you could just look much. in the mirror. Yeah, do your thing. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday again. Um, well, that's exciting. So you can see it anywhere. It's nationwide. You can nationwide. go to the movie theater and see the boys and Laura sing in their hearts out. Fathom events. And yeah. then what you do on the website is you like type in your zip code and it will Tell list you where all of go. the theaters that are in your area that are playing it. And it's in like hundreds of theaters across the country. Ooh, so we're so thrilled. I, it's just, it's such an honor it. that the show, you know, is getting to live on in this way and kind of have a second life. So think about it. Thrilled. Veterans Day is almost here too. That's right. You have more than that going on. A little, yeah. So you're gonna <laughs> do, so the 15th, tell us about your concert. 
Oh, uh, so Broadway, the Broadway Princess Party, which originated here at 54 Below in New York City, All is the gals. expanding and has been going on tour for this last year. We the 15th, it's in Charlotte. The 16th, it's in Nashville. And it just keeps going. <laughs> That's it. Sorry, I mean, I do you want to like come and be mm. our spokesperson? Like, I mean, I would. Be, I'm such a princess person. How many tiaras do you have? Uh, actually, I think I only have two. I think I have two, and one for the dog. Yes, Lila has you know one. A dress too. It. She has a. She has her Cinderella dress. I dressed her for Halloween. Did you see the picture? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it we're going Helen to. Very seriously. We're going to the <laughs> South here in November, hitting Huntsville, Charlotte, and Nashville, and then we have a like a. 10-day holiday tour. We're doing like Aww. four dates in California in December, followed by t Arizona and Pennsylvania and finishing in New York at Sony Hall on December Amazing. 17th. So you'll be with uh, Courtney Reed. Yes, Jasmine. Of Aladdin. And Susan Egan. Susan Egan, the Bell. Bell. Anyone else we should know about? And then we have Benjamin Rauhala is our music director. We so call good. him our fairy god fairy. <laughs> and um, I have obviously, a feeling he made that up, not you. Well, we all <laughs> it, we all did early on. It became like we were all playing. We were all like characters and had names, and then we were like Ben needs a name, and so that and so stuck. he was dubbed. There you go. Exactly. And then we have our prince Adam Joseph Levy. Love it. So cute. And then we're having um, guest stars in a lot of the cities. We do this awesome thing called the Unleash Your Inner Princess contest mm. where we find local talent um, and try to find a young girl in each city oh, to come so be awesome. a princess with us. And um, we also have a few special guests. Rachel Potter was announced today nice. as joining us in Nashville. And then we're hoping to have some fun guests when we come back to She's New York City. She's a Nashville City too. star now. She is indeed. Annalise Vanderpool is joining us in <gasps> California. That's a raven. Yeah, Sorry. that's not really announced yet. Live at five, you heard it here first. <laughs> you have to break the news, break the news. Exactly. And where were you recently? Hmm? Who did you sing with recently? Santino. Santino. Santino Is Fontana. that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. I was just in D.C. So at the Kennedy Center. Laura is one of our the few people who has had two Broadway.com vlogs. One for Cinderella and one for Bandstand. I still get people like daily really? that are like, I love your vlog. I watch your vlog all the time. So people get a little you. addicted to watching you and the fish and Santino fish. lose your minds <laughs> in Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Those of course, days. with the band, which is the Bandstand one, which if you're gearing up to go see Bandstand in the movie theaters, watch the vlog. It's on YouTube. Right. It's on Broadway.com. There's a like full, full series, full eight episodes. I'm just saying. It's around. It's there. Um, <laughs> Indeed. I know. We'll get to your questions. Just calm down. I know you all are like typing here. So like, what are they talking about? Well, take my question. Um, so yeah, so was it great to be a Santino again? Oh, so fun. I just, I love doing concerts and working with him. Um, we have a few different concerts we do. This was a cabaret act that we created for... Um, New Jersey Performing Arts Center that nice. we did for PBS a few years ago. So we brought that concert back, and then we have a symphony gig we do called Broadway Romance um, with Ted Sperling that we travel with some, uh, sometimes. So we you just do have the best leading men. I do. I really do. And like I we said, with so American lucky. Sun, American Sun stars four people, and two of them you've you've worked with. I just posted my Instagram right before I came in here that a picture of me and Jeremy, or uh, Jer me, me, Jeremy, and Steve. And speaking Steve of Pascal, November Jeremy birthdays, yeah. I just have to say my birthday is the nineteenth. Um, Steve's is the eighteenth, and Jeremy's is the twentieth. So like we a have Scorpio. a Scorpio birthday <laughs> trifecta. sandwich trifecta happening. That sounds terrifying. With those guys. And they're, <laughs> yeah, they're incredible. And it was just so fun to get to see them last night and support them. And the yeah. play is wonderful. Everyone should go intense. see American Sun. Intense. It's really intense. All right, we're going to get to your questions because I know you've got a lot of them. Yes. Caitlin, help us out. Oh, sure. So Elise from Facebook says, you are such an inspiration to me. What advice would you give to someone who dreams of being on Broadway one day? Oh, thank you. Elise? Elise. Yes. Um, gorgeous. I, you know, everyone always asks advice and I have to say that there's no like cookie cut out plan to follow like follow these four steps and you'll like make it um I have a very unique story I did a tv reality show that got it me doesn't to come Broadway up that often right so that's my advice <laughs> win a reality show like no um so I think like work work hard and f it sounds so cliche but like following your heart and like I left college to pursue a job opportunity like not right for everybody I was a very <clears> good student but I think working hard and like being in the right place at the right time being yourself um not 
trying, I feel like we always try to be what people want us to be. And at the end of the day, the truest, most authentic thing you can do is walk in the room for any audition or any role you're playing and bring the best of yourself to that role. Um, and just be patient too. Your time will come. You, I'm sure everybody watching is young, and so like I feel like I, there were Why a lot would of. Why you say that, Laura? There were a lot of plenty <laughs> things, plenty of things that I I didn't get. Um, you know that now I look back and I go, oh, like I had to either learn that lesson or just be be patient. Your time will come. Keep working hard and dreaming big. I love, love that. that. That's very helpful. Oh, and she's that. always kind to everyone. Didn't you have a little kindness. pillow that said kindness matters? I did in my dr Cinderella dressing room. Oh, oh my gosh. I watched those vlogs, Laura. Wow. That's actually part of my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you are very kind to everyone. People remember that. Thank remember. you for saying that. I try. I don't know if that's my, my like Midwest Minnesota roots. It's but good advice, though. It's, Im it's <laughs> great. It's important. People want to work with people who are nice and like work hard and... Um, I just think, yeah, being humble and being kind. It's a very small industry, actually. Once you yeah. kind of get your foot in the door, everybody kind there of knows really everybody. Only of us in here. And so, yeah, yeah. So your reputation goes a long way. So true. Awesome. Uh, Lauren says, as a fellow Minnesotan, what's the biggest adjustment moving from Minnesota to New York? Yay, Minnesota! <laughs> Hi, I was just there. Um, Gosh, I always, I mean, New York was always someplace I dreamed of being, and so I, I knew that I wanted to live here, and it was definitely a culture shock, kind of. Mm -hmm. So what was the biggest, I remember, because we go way back, I remember yeah. you and Max Crum. Yes. <laughs> like, basically getting off the bus from wherever they shipped you in from, yep. and I don't mean Minnesota, I mean it was like wherever studio the, or wherever yeah. you were coming from, and just like in LA. the Times Square. We Looking came out a here. Little shell shock, yeah, frankly. we came out That's here smiling. the day after we won the Grease contest. They flew us out here for like three days of press, and we did like two photo shoots and like yeah. all this press stuff. And we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and I think that to me was the biggest shock, actually. And with the whole just dumped them in Times Square and said, "Talk to everybody, and get your <laughs> picture taken." And like coming out the stage door and having fan like they didn't get us a car at first because they didn't know it was gonna we were gonna mm. be such a, a hit. like. A hit, yeah. And so, like, learning that they had set up barricades and then they got us a car to drive us home because the fans, it was so remarkable. I mean, it was amazing, but a culture shock that way. I think that's the thing is it's not just the work that we do, like the story that we tell. It's all the other things that go with it when you're in a show, like things like this, press opportunities, photo shoots, social media things now that have this different oh, yeah. expectation. It's like a part-time job. It is. It is, and that whole side of it, I think, is something I wasn't expecting or didn't know. And you had to I... find a way to be grounded through all of that. Absolutely, easy to get for normal people, not fancy princess, no, you know, star <laughs> nominee people. Oh my God. Uh, it can be very, <laughs> she's, it can be very overwhelming. It is all overwhelming, that stuff. and for it's an actor, I even think for even... anybody, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yes, but fancy people too. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Jordan says. What does it feel like to see Bandstand live on in this way? And especially, they asked if there were going to be any more Donny Nova concerts or if you guys are ever going to oh, get yeah. back together Good again. Question. Fantastic question. Um, it's really just rewarding to know that Bandstand is getting to live on. We ran for five and a half months on Broadway, and it was the most kind of fulfilling five and a half months of anything creatively, artistically that I've done. I'm very proud of the show and um, loved getting to play Julia Trojan with that incredible cast of, of Such people. Such a great cast. Um, under Andy Blankenbuehler's brilliant direction and choreography. Um, so it's really fun to get to know that it lives on in this way. Same with the cast album, but also strange to watch it. Like I said, when as we a, watch the screening. Stage you know, mostly a stage actor. You're, you just sort of have your experience, and we have our experience on the other side of the uh -huh. lights. I'm and not now used to seeing see myself. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting, I remember when I watched it, what's interesting is like how I remembered feeling doing it mm -hmm. is very different than what I saw and sense. how I felt mm -hmm. when I saw it. And I almost want to remember what I felt like as opposed to what I looked like. So that's maybe why I don't want to see it again. I'm I glad that I that. saw it once, and I'm like, great. But I kind of... I want to remember the feeling of it and not. But what a great preservation visual. Uh, absolutely, show. absolutely. And it's, I gotta be honest, I, it reaches so many more people getting mm -hmm. to see it in movie theaters across the country. Mm -hmm. Last time it aired, I, my social media was exploding with people going, I finally got to see it. Or a lot of our fans who did get to see it in New York still bought tickets to see the movie and. Relive it. Um, yeah. That's relive amazing. it. So many, so, you know, millions of people getting to see it instead of just, you know, a thousand every night in the right. theater. 
And then do you have any fun concerts coming up with a certain co-star that you want to talk about? Oh, yes. And I, I realized <laughs> I didn't quite answer the Donnie Nova question. We've been thrilled to get to... The guy, the Donnie Nova band is. We played Vegas this summer, which was so, so fun. Um, we'll probably come back to Birdland at some point, but it's getting hard now because it's eight. There's seven of us in the band plus our and music they all director, work. and pe yeah, people are working and spreading out. So it's hard to get all of our schedules to align in a time where we're all available. Um, but we all we love making music together, and that's fantastic. Um, and yes, announced today. Corey Cott and I are reuniting to do a concert in Kansas City, January 16th and 17th. And At the Broadway Princess Party is playing Kansas City on the 18th. So, so move in we're, there. yes, we're coordinating it while I'm already in town for Broadway Princess Party. It'll be at MTH. MTH music Theater, theater music, music Theater Heritage. Heritage. And it's limited seating. It's very. It's an intimate theater, so we are thrilled. This is the first time Corey and I have done a duet show together. Um, so I'm just are you yeah, in touch I'm, with all of your awesome leading men? All I of mean, them. Obviously, you saw Stephen and uh, and Jeremy, Jeremy last, last night. night. I did a concert with Santino two days ago. Mm -hmm. I've seen Co yes, Corey, uh, Cot, and I talk. Does all he the send time. you baby pictures of little Elliot? I'm actually on the family photo stream. Of course you are. <laughs> Because if you work with Laura Austin, she becomes part of your family. That's what we're learning. <laughs> <laughs> so you just wake up to new pictures. Of I do of Elliot <laughs> daily. Yes. Because Corey had his baby while he was doing bandstand. It was very special. Two days after we opened. Yeah. That's he knows how to multitask. <laughs> he does. Oh, my gosh. Corey. Cor and Corey was so remarkable and on he's the show. Still, and he just was right there doing it. He's he missed remarkable. very little time. He, di he did. He was back the next day. And then his voice left him rightly so because he was getting no sleep plus we recorded our cast album like in those three days as well it was too much so he literally took like one show off and then was back again because he's superhuman he's a rock star it's true it's true all right one more question we have to get going yeah let's do one last question and pl you played julia for five and a half months what did she teach you the most oh my goodness oh gosh julia <laughs> what did she teach me i think um there was something so beautifully strong and complex about her. Um, I loved her ability to share her wor her thoughts through poetry and then her guts to be able to, um, after what she had gone through, feel like she could move on and then also, yeah, the guts to share the her raw heart on, you know, essentially the radio, on national radio yeah. um, in the day. Um, and then, yeah, she was she was conflicted. She was, you know, kind That's of falling in so love, but feeling needing to pay homage to her, you know, her husband who had died. And it's a very complicated place to be. And um, going through her journey every night was really just wonderful. And as I already said, rewarding in a way. But she taught me a lot. It was really cool to get to step in her shoes. And also that time period, I think, was also really special. Getting to do research about the 40s and... Again, being a war widow, having lost, mm -hmm. you know, somebody and getting to step into that. And doing research about your own family, right? Absolutely. My grandma, Nate's grandma, was a, a jazz singer in a jazz band in the 40s. And That's that amazing cool. that you found that connection. I know. <laughs> it's really cool. And then my, my grandma was a nurse also right after World War II. So I remember I had a picture of her in my dressing room during South Pacific. And so, yeah, it's life imitating art, art imitating life. It's really cool. This is such a deep conversation. I love it. I can't but even contain myself. But we have run out. <laughs> Go see Vanson. <laughs> <Go see Anson. laughs> <laughs> but we have run out of time. Go see the Princess Party. Yeah. Go see Corey Cott in Kansas City with yes. Laura. Happy Happy Princess Party is everywhere. Yeah, visit our website. It has all of the tour dates coming up. We have a bunch. Go of look at pictures things. of her dog in Lila. Full costume. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And Thank that you that again for having me. Thrilled anytime. to be here. You are welcome here anytime. Thanks. Kaylin, take us on out. Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast version for ser by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Robin Herter of New York City Center's A Chorus Line.